Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So I today put together an interesting diary looking at malware that actually uses the Wi-Fi network the user is connected to in order to do geolocation. Now, a lot of operating systems, of course, have sort of built-in APIs uh, that are using, for example, the BSSID of uh, the local Wi-Fi network in order to do geolocation, but often the user will be alerted if uh, this API is used. Instead here, it just essentially grabs the MAC address of uh, the default gateway and uses a website, uh, milnikov.org which uh, is uh, looks like a hobby run website uh, by Alexander Milnikov. That's sort of where uh, the name also uh, comes from. And uh, one thing that uh, Xavier suggests is that you probably should kind of uh, look out for hits uh, to this particular host name if this becomes more popular with malware. Of course, this could also be used to detect uh, sandbox and such where then the geolocation of the public IP address and the geolocation of uh, the local Wi-Fi network or network they're connected to are not matching up. And back in June, we talked about the Trek IP stack, which is, well, one of those pieces of software that nobody heard about, but everybody is using. This is an IP stack that you often find in embedded devices. And there were a large number, about 30 different vulnerabilities that were found in Trek IP. Well, once uh, news like this uh, comes out, of course, others start looking and we now have four different new vulnerabilities that Trek patched in its IP stack. The first one is actually not so the basic TCP IP protocol, but in the HTTP server component that is included with Trek and uh, this could cause a denial of service. Then two more vulnerabilities in the IPv6 component and a third in the DHCPv6 client, which of course is only exploitable via the local network. And to help you identify if you're running any affected devices, Forescout, who was the company that found the original vulnerabilities, came out with a Python script that should help you detect vulnerable devices. This Python script does not actually run any of the exploit. It just does standard fingerprinting. For example, it looks at TCP options. A couple of things that I sort of noticed just skimming through these TCP fingerprints that are being included there is first of all, like a window scale of zero. That's seen, but not really often seen. Also, for example, maximum segment sizes of 1240 and 536. So uh, you could probably also easily write a passive detection signature based on uh, this uh, Python script. Well, uh, this is it for today. Keep me short today to give you more time for the holidays and for uh, final gift shopping. So talk to you again on Monday.